I'm Lisa de Nicolitz and I'd like to read to you from my novel, A Glittering Chaos. And, as I say, viewer discretion is advised. In early October, Melusine arrives at work. She parks and lets herself into the library, startled to find that the main door is unlocked. She's usually the first one there. In the early days of Hans's defection to the anarchical indigence, Melusine was regarded by the townspeople as a curiosity, and the library staff welcomed a host of visitors they hadn't seen in a long time, and perhaps had never seen. But eventually the townsfolk accepted the situation, and Melusine was left in relative privacy. She's surprised today to find her boss and a member of the board of directors waiting for her. Did I forget about a meeting? she asks and they look at each other and shake their heads. No, Melazine, you did not. She makes to join them and pull up a chair. Uh, no, you don't need to sit, the director says. In fact, really, you should stand. I beg your pardon? As well you should, the director continues. Beg our pardon, I mean. I have no idea how you thought you could do this. I'm astounded, Melazine Meyer. And your parents? Such good people. I knew them, did you know that? I used to have my pictures framed in their store. Your father had such a great eye for the perfect frame to bring out the beauty in a painting. And one would think, Melusine, that you, given your upbringing, would know art from vulgarity. Would you not? I've got no idea what you're talking about, Melusine says, baffled. And you even studied fine art, did you not? What I have no idea about, madam, is how you thought you could do this and just carry on. Do this and get away with it. Do what? Please explain again. I have no idea what you're talking about. The director looks at Melazine's boss and they both nod. The director pulls an art catalogue out of her briefcase and opens it. And there, as a double page spread, is one of the images that Melazine is so proud of. One of the images that Gunther had taken. And there she is in all her naked glory, with her generous untrimmed bush wild and curly for all the world to see, her eyes wanton, her lips dark, wet and parted. Melazine grips the table and her knees buckle. It's not what you think, she wants to say, but she doesn't say anything. That these images are part of an exhibit in the Museum of Modern Art in New York means nothing, the director says. She's a bony woman in her late fifties, and she's thin, but she has an unfortunate array of unsightly fleshy chins, all of which jiggle when she speaks. You are one of the many respected curators in this, our library, in this, our small town. How do you think parents will feel having this image of you in their minds when you interact with their children? Did you really think you could remain part of our hallowed institution after exposing yourself to the whole world like this? Honestly, Melusine, I have got no idea what you were thinking, and it doesn't even matter. You can't continue working here. You're fired with immediate effect. We don't need more of a reason than this. And we certainly don't need three letters of warning. This catalogue is more than enough reason to let you go. You're not the kind of person we want around our children. And we should have known there was something fundamentally wrong in your home after what your husband did to that schoolgirl, and everybody knows that he killed his sister because they were lovers. And what astounds me is that your son appears to be relatively normal, but he's young. There's still time. This last comment enrages Melazine, and she swells with fighting spirit. She stands tall and towers over the seated director. Director, she says, firstly you have my sympathies, that you're such a dried up old carcass of a woman, that no one would ever wish to photograph you like this. You will never be the muse or subject of beauty in one of the world's most respected museums, but I will. And you never had children because your womb is as barren as your mind and as dead as your soul. And if you ever so much as hint that there's anything wrong with my precious boy, you will not withstand the fire of my wrath. And fine, I'll leave the library. I'll leave this hallowed institution as you put it. But you remember this, not one word about my boy, ever. Do you understand me? She is angrier than she's ever been in her life, and she's gratified to see the director go pale. She turns to leave. Oh, and one last thing. You've got no idea how I could do this? 
I did it for me. I did this for fun. I did this out of the sheer joy of being alive. And I did it because it made me happy. She leans down, amused to see the director tilt backwards in her chair with a look of fright on her face. And she grabs the catalogue and walks off without a backward glance. A matte melazine from a glittering chaos which you can order on Amazon.ca or if you're in Canada you can find it in a bookstore and I hope you enjoyed the reading. Thank you.